boys and girls. Welcome to week 28 of Phonics and Language. If you have not done so already, please make sure that you have watched my new instruction video about the use of a and the use of an. So if you have not done that yet, please go ahead and watch that video. If you have done that, please make sure you have all of your papers together and your numbers circled or highlighted so that you know what we're going to be working on today. We're going to go ahead and get started. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and do that whenever you need to, but I want to walk you through one question per each page, all right? Let's go ahead and begin. We're on page 269 looking at question one. Now, for those of you who watched my video, let's go ahead and stop at the paw print right here before and review the use of a and the use of an. Use a before nouns that begin with consonant sounds, and then use an before words that begin with vowel sounds. So we, re we remember what our consonants are, and remember what our vowels are and the sounds that we make. So let's look at the word. This first word is inspector. So we need to decide this i, okay? Is that the i, the sound of a vowel or the sound of a consonant? It's the sound of a vowel. So with vowel sounds, we use the word an. So this would say an inspector instead of a inspector. We would say an inspector came over to my house, okay? Raspberry, raspberry, raspberry. That R is a consonant sound, so we would just say A. A raspberry, I ate a raspberry. We would not say I ate an raspberry. That already sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? All right, giant. The BFG was a giant. That J sound, J, 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 is a consonant, not a vowel sound. Okay, we've got the word elevator. I went on an elevator, an, because that e eh is a vowel sound. I went on an elevator on vacation. Author, okay, I want to be an author one day because that aw sound, aw, is kind of like the vowel sound for O, ah, ah, ah. So we would use an for the word that comes before author, an author, instead of a author. I want to be a author when I grow up. Doesn't that sound funny? And the word camel. K -k -k. That's going to be a consonant sound. So we just have to use letter A. A camel. I saw a camel at the zoo, and not an camel at the zoo. That already sounds kind of funny. All right, we're moving on to page 271. We're going to be looking at some abbreviations here. Now we remember right here by this little bone, it says an abbreviation is a short way to write a longer word. An abbreviation usually ends with a period. So number one asks us to draw lines to match the abbreviations with the word. So we're going to be drawing some squiggly lines. So I hope you're paying attention because these lines are going to look a little crazy in just a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and circle the word minute. And we're going to draw a line from the word minute to the abbreviation. So let's look and find the abbreviation would be min. M-I-N, period. Oh, there it is, min. So I'm going to go ahead and circle min, and then I'm going to draw a line. It's going to be kind of squiggly. Ah, all the way to min. There we go. Okay, so there is that. Um, all right, now we're going to go to this abbreviation right here, H-R, period. What would that be for? Hour, right? Hour. There's four hours left, or HR, hour. So we're gonna circle this, and we're gonna look for the word hour because this is the abbreviation, okay? You guys find the word hour? Right here. So we're gonna draw a line. It's gonna kinda of squiggle and cross over this guy. Good. All right, how about we do PT? 
know some of you have worked on your liquid measurements. This is an abbreviation for the word pint. So we're going to circle this PT period and find the word pint up here and draw a squiggly. See, it gets kind of confusing, doesn't it? Okay, YD period. If we're measuring length measurements, YD period is yard. Okay, so we're going to find the word yard right down here and we're going to connect them. Good. And this is the word what? What's that word? Pound. Very good. Pound. That's the word pound. So we're going to circle the word pound and we're going to find the abbreviation for pound, which is, it's not P with an O or a U or anything. It's actually LB period for pound. So we're going to go ahead and connect them. All right. Last piece is gallon. This is the word gallon. The abbreviation for gallon is gal. So we'll go ahead and circle him and draw the line. And then this is the word ounce. And for ounce, it's OZ period. There we go. Good job. All right, let's go to page 272. We're going to be looking down here at the bottom because this is just a review of A and Ann, and we've already done a review of that together. So down here at the bottom, we're going to circle yes or no on if these sentences are complete. So this sentence, did you see that pink bird? Does it have a subject and a predicate? It does, yes. So it's a complete sentence. A roseate spoonbill might look like a flamingo to some people, but it is not. Does it have a subject and a predicate? Does it sound complete? Yeah, it's got all the parts to it. Good. A flat spoon spoon shaped bill. That's it. It definitely has a subject, but does it have a predicate? Did something happen? Is there a verb? There's no action in this sentence, so there's, it's not a complete sentence. All right, here we go. Sweeps its bill through the water to find small fish. Let's read that one more time. Sweeps its bill through the water to find small fish. There's definitely action in this sentence, but it doesn't tell us who it's talking about. There's no who or what. There is no subject. It's just a predicate. So this is not a complete sentence. Even though it's super long, it's not complete because it doesn't have a subject. Last one, look for these pretty pink birds in Everglades National Park. Look for these pretty pink birds in Everglades National Park. What do you think? I would say no. Good job. All right. Let's move on to page 273. Okay. 273. Oh, and I'm sorry. I believe this is technically a complete sentence. There you go. It was. Sorry. Okay, moving on to page 273. We're at question two. So we remember that er, the suffix er at the end of a word means that it is um, an adjective. It's an adjective when comparing two things. And then when you add est or est to an adjective, you're comparing three or more things. So words like bigger means that bigger, there's two things and one of them is bigger. But if we say biggest, okay, biggest, that means that there are lots of things and this one is the biggest out of all of them. There's more than three things, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these three words and we're going to turn them or we're going to add suffixes to them, okay? So the word icy, we're going to turn it into icier, like that lake is icier than that lake, okay? So kind of like when we have an 
a Y at the end of a um, noun that we're trying to make plural. When we spell it, okay, instead of the Y, we drop the Y and add I-E-R. I see your. Okay? And then same for I C S. Drop the Y and add I E S T. Okay? And then we've got green. So green er. Green er. And then green est. Okay? Yummy. Oh, there's another Y. So we're going to drop that Y and add I E R. Yum e er. Okay. And then yum e est. Okay. Very good. Now we're going to move to page 277. 277. You boys and girls are doing such a great job. Okay, and I don't have colors with me, so you guys can get out your crayons, um, brown, orange, and green, or you can do what I'm going to do and just write the letters beside the sentence, but we're going to figure out what types of sentences these are. Are they declarative, interrogative, or exclamatory? As a review, declarative is a statement sentence. It's going to end in a period. Interrogative is a question, so it's going to end in a question mark. And exclamatory is an exclamation. We're excited. We're exclaiming something. And it's typically going to end with an exclamation mark. Okay? All right, let's read these sentences. Do you like to eat eggs? That would be interrogative. So I'm just going to put an I right there because I don't have colors. Many animals lay eggs. It's just a statement, so it's declarative. The Easter indigo snake lays very large eggs. Another declarative, it's just a statement. It's just telling you something. Do you know how much an ostrich egg weighs? There's a question mark, so it must be interrogative. You can see right through frog eggs. Now look at that at the end. It's an exclamation point, so it's exclamatory. So we're going to do E. A bee hummingbird's eggs are only one-fourth inch long. Another declarative sentence. It's just a statement, so a D. Okay? Very good review on that, boys and girls. And actually, that's our very last page because page 278, right here, totally optional. You do not have to do it if you do not want to. Okay? Thank you for working so hard. Bye-bye.